Hello, everybody, and welcome to today's practice media availability. First off, we're going to start with Wings forward, Bella Allery. If you have any questions for Bella, please use the raise your hand feature, and we're going to go in the order that the questions are received. First, we have a question from the chat. Obviously, uh, last night was Satu's first game back with the team. What do you think she brings um, to the forward position, and uh, what did you see from her in practice that, that you might want to bring to your own game? Yeah, I mean, I think she brings a lot of energy. She's obviously super versatile and can take it out to the three-point line and take people off the drive. Um, her energy is just amazing. I know she brings her teammates along. Um, obviously, she's only been here for a few days, so we're getting her adjusted to the plays and our system and everything. But obviously, you saw, I think she had a near double-double last night. So just being a beast on both ends, I think, you know, that's what she brings to our team. Great, thank you very much. Next, we're gonna go to Dorothy Gentry. Dorothy, go ahead and ask your question. Hi, Bella, how are you today? Good, how are you? Oh, well, thanks for your time. Um, Bella, it's your, it's your second year you know, in the, in the league and last year you had a coach and you were in the bubble. This year, new coach, new squad. Kind of talk about how, how you are, I guess, reacclimating yourself to the league and preparing to uh, show that you do belong here. Talk about your game and how you've evolved as a player. Yeah, I mean, it kind of feels like another rookie year, especially when we're on the road and stuff. I've never even like traveled with our team or anything. So I feel like I'm adjusting to the league again. Um, but I really love, you know, playing for the wings. I think I've developed my game a lot while I was overseas, um, working on my offensive game, um, being more confident out on the floor. I feel like I don't have the same nerves I did as last year when I step out on the floor. I know I'm there to bring energy, to make an instant impact and to play defense. Um, and that's what I've been trying to do every time I get a chance out on the court. Um, but I think a big thing is just my mindset and my confidence has really changed and developed. And I know if I continue to work hard, I'll keep proving myself out there. You're surrounded by a lot of veterans like Kayla Thornton and uh, Alicia Gray uh, and even Enrique and now uh, Marina. Talk a little bit about uh, what you're learning from them, like in practice and, you know, any tidbits in the games or whatever, you know, doing the huddles that, that they're giving you to help you uh, come along. Yeah, I think the big thing is we, you know, communicate with each other. We're very honest with each other in the huddles and we make sure we're correcting our mistakes. Um, I think the big thing that we're working on as a team is just staying the course, um, not letting us ride too high on the highs or low on the lows. Um, but they give great advice. Obviously, I see how hard they work in practice, um, how much they give, you know, in the games. And so I just try to take that from them and um, try to emulate that in my own game. Thank you. Thank you, Dorothy. Do we have any other questions for Bella? Yeah, I have a question. <laughs> um, okay, first we're going to go to Dan Orion, Queen Ballers Club. Dan, go ahead and ask your question. Thank you. Thanks, Bella. Bella, can you describe any pregame routines you use to get yourself mentally prepared for performance or anything you do intentionally to get that mindset where it needs to be? Yeah, I mean, I definitely, if we have an evening game, I'll like take a nap and make sure I'm rested and, you know, my mind and my body feels ready for the game. Um, one thing I do is positive visualization. Um, I spend time just in my own mind thinking about what I'm going to do in the game, um, whether that's playing great defense, getting rebounds, making my shots. I just go through all that in my head and try to get myself in the right mindset. I think that's done wonders for me. I've been doing that since I was in middle school. Um, and it really helps with my confidence when I step out on the floor. I feel like my nerves have kind of diminished if I can really visualize myself playing a great game out there. Um, and then just trying to stay focused. You know, we, we get to the gym pretty early before games. So, um, you know, once I'm warmed up, just trying to stay locked in, maybe listen to music and just get myself in the right mindset. Um, but those are kind of the main things I'll do. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. Next, we're going to go to Ron Thulin. Ron, go ahead and ask your question. Hi, uh, Bella. Bill, I hope you're doing OK today. Thank you. You too. Uh, talk about the fact that two games against Seattle, you guys were, you know, a hair short each time. A lot of people would say, well, you know, uh, but 
has it given you guys confidence that yes, we can play with the defending WNBA champions with hall of famers on their roster? What has those two games come out positive for you? Yeah, I think we, you obviously learn a lot from losses and these games are heartbreakers when we win, you know, I mean, when we lose in the last seconds of overtime, but it does show, I mean, we can obviously hang with Seattle and we can beat them. We know that's a possibility. Um, so we just have to, you know, learn from the mistakes we made in the last game and move forward. We get another opportunity, um, you know, on Sunday to, to go and, you know, right the ship. So I think, um, it's just, you know, taking away what you can from the game and not staying down on it. We have a 24 hour rule where, you know, we're not going to dwell on it for too long. We're going to go back and, you know, fight in the next game. So I think, um, obviously it's heartbreaking to lose, but we know we can win these games. Um, obviously these are all winnable games. Um, and if we correct our mistakes, you know, we can be the defending champs. You know, it's and one final question. I know it's too early to talk about big games. And, uh, you know, we're still pretty much early in the season. But will this game have big significance, the next game versus Seattle, if you can pull out a win? Does that kind of get a little monkey off the back type thing? Yeah, it matters a lot to us. I think it, it will give us confidence. Um, it will show that, you know, these overtime games, like – we could have won those. So if we can win this one, I think it'll mean a lot to the team, um, getting ourselves in the win column again. Um, you know, we have three more games after our Seattle game on the road. So I think that'll be good for us mentally going forward on our road trip. Um, but yeah, it would be, it would be really important for us to win this game on Sunday. Best of luck. Thank you. Thank you very much. Do we have any other questions for Bella? All right, well, thank you for joining us today, Bella. If you guys can just give us a quick second, we will be right back with head coach Vicki Johnson and Charlie Collier. Nothing, nothing, you know. All right, next up we have head coach Vicki Johnson. If you have any questions for coach Johnson, just use the raise your hand feature and we will go in the order that the questions are received. First, we are gonna go to Dorothy Gentry. Dorothy, go ahead and ask your question. Good afternoon, coach. How are you doing today? I'm good, and you? I'm doing well. Yesterday, you were talking about, you know, the importance of trans transition defense and, you know, not giving up the easy points and all that to the other team. And then you talked about how you want to focus on that. How, how, how are you, you know, stressing that in practice and how are they, how are the, the, the um, defenders practicing, you know, getting back on defense after a play? Can you kind of talk about how you're, how you're stressing that during practice? Well, we have a we have a defensive drill, transition uh, defensive mm -hmm. drill that um, that we do, uh, but it's all about uh, understanding uh, the spacing on the court. Mm -hmm. uh, if if we just made a mistake, I, I don't want to really say what we did and what we're mm -hmm. correcting. Uh, okay, I promise you, uh, we will have better transition defense. <laughs> Uh, we haven't had practice yet. Uh, we mm -hmm. have practice that we wanted today. Oh, okay. Okay. But we have a lot of things that uh, we're going to clean up. Uh, but even though we made a lot of mistakes, we did a lot of great things. Um, mm -hmm. And we still had a great opportunity to win. Um, so that's a plus. Um, the energy was good from our team. And we just got to mm -hmm. continue to encourage 
uh, and not discourage them uh, to let them know we're going to watch film in the next uh, 20 minutes, 15 minutes, I mean, sorry, 15 minutes, and just see ourselves on, on, on film, on video, and talk about it, uh, understanding uh, what we can do better, uh, what we can continue to do well, uh, and it starts with us. Everything starts with us, uh, and it's about uh, a commitment, discipline, and consistency for 40 minutes. Okay, and then as a follow up, can you talk a little bit about the the offensive, you know, power that you have now in Marina as well? You know, you had Arike already there, you know, the league uh, scoring leader, and now you you have another scorer. You know, of course, Alicia's coming along with her scoring, Satu, of course, but then Marina as well. Can you talk about specifically Marina and what she's bringing to the te team offensively? Well, I think I think I think the biggest thing the biggest thing with Mabry, she's an amazing shooter. Um, but she understands the system. Um, she loves the system. Uh, it gives her opportunity to be a, a threat, uh, but not just for her, for everyone. Everyone, this, this, this offense is designed for them uh, to share the basketball and shoot the basketball and play together. Uh, they can see, you know, they have to get downhill and, and see, uh, read and write, react to the defense. Uh, but if you look at our three guards and, and uh, Mabry, Arike, and Gray, uh, if you look at their average, they're all averaging, I think, 20, 20 plus a game, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, but it's just an opportunity for all of them to be able, they're all great scorers. They can do multiple things, shoot the basketball, put the ball on the floor, cut all those things. Um, offensively, I'm not really concerned about my, uh, our defense is right. <laughs> concerned about. Um, okay. And I feel like our, our post players are taking too many jump shots. Okay. And then lastly, can you talk a little bit about uh, Bella? You know, she's not getting a lot of minutes, but when she comes in, you know, she is making, you know, a, a difference, you know, on the court. And how do you keep her uh, motivated and, and just ready for her name to be called? Well, uh, everybody knows their role. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and everybody has accepted that role. Uh, and, and the one thing uh, I have told my team is it's not about how many minutes, it's how you play your minutes. Uh, mm -hmm. Play your minutes hard, uh, mm -hmm. do your role, uh, meet your goal, and our team will be successful. And she did that. Uh, Bella will play more minutes tomorrow uh, just because of the flow of everything. Uh, and, and hopefully she can continue to do what she did uh, last night. Uh, but Charlie played well as well. Uh, everybody plays played well. We just got to clean up some things. Thank you, Coach. You're welcome. Next, we're going to go to Ron Thulin. Ron, go ahead and ask your question. Hi, Vicki. Thanks for spending some time with us today. Oh, you're welcome. Uh, a, a couple of questions. Number one, the rotation right now. Uh, last night, obviously, Satu and Alicia uh, came off the bench. Uh, was that just to see where they were um, physically and how they're going to work with this team? Talk about their role last night. Well, it, it's it's not. Alicia has been with us, but she left for two and a half weeks. Um, uh, we're in a different rhythm. Satu has never uh, been and understand our system. Um, and so we only had one practice with her and, and, and we didn't really want to mess up the rhythm of everything, uh, the flow. Uh, we tried it in practice and, and the rhythm was off. Uh, and, and most people don't understand, like when you play a team sport, you know, if one person is off, the whole team will be off. And we didn't want to frustrate the team as a whole. Um, so I thought it was better for her, for them to come off the bench and see the flow of everything defensively and offensively. And then once they got the flow, it, it was fine. Uh, there was only a total of eight sets that they really, really uh, knew. Uh, and so uh, we try to stick to those sets uh, and defensively, uh, we have to continue to work on uh, our rotation, uh, how we defend the pick and roll, understand different uh, rotations uh, and, and they didn't they didn't they didn't completely uh, picked it up pick it up in in one practice you know so uh, one final question over the last couple of games including uh, the during the homestand 
I think uh, Coach Peebley and I have seen Charlie Collier make incremental steps of, of understanding the game and her role on the team. From your perspective, what have you seen that she's improved on? I think, I think her toughness, her toughness over anything. I think um, her attention to detail, uh, trying to do trying to trying to do the right things uh, and plan hard, uh, being more physical on the block, um, rebounding the basketball, being able to finish her offensive rebounds, uh, and then stepping up to the free throw line and making free throws. Uh, she's getting in better shape too, you know. Um, that our game is fast, and uh, she's kind of understanding the speed of our game and. She's, I'm very proud of her and, and we're still pushing her. She's one of those players uh, that, uh, that want to learn, want to improve every day, want to know everything. And then she can, she can carry it out when she get on uh, in the game. So we're looking forward to uh, tomorrow uh, versus Seattle. And, and let's see, let's throw, throw up the ball and let's see what happens. Great, thank you very much, Coach. Next, we're gonna to go to Adrian Rodriguez. Adrian, go ahead and ask your question. Hi, Coach, hope you're doing well. Um, Good. So, obviously, you know, a little bit of a rough start to the season two and five, but you've been able to hang in with the, the bigger, tougher teams. What have you seen from your first and second year players that kind of give you hope going forward this season and, you know, for the future? Oh, uh, um, the fight. Uh, was huge. Uh, it's it's a it's a new system. I'm a new coach. Uh, my expectation is different from any other coach. Uh, they probably have had in the past. Uh, I expect them to play both sides of the basketball. I expect them to play hard. I expect them to play together. Uh, I expect them to uh, uplift and not uh, drop their head. Uh, so it's it's a little different. Uh, what uh, I'm trying to bring, and it's a process. Uh, it's going to be nice to uh, to have all 12 players. Uh, the, the system is built on a 12-man roster, the way we try to play defensively and offensively. Uh, it really hurt us not to have KT uh, yesterday. Uh, we had to run a little bit more minutes, but uh, overall, I'm proud of them, and we just got to continue to push and continue to grow as a team. You know, once we get it, on both sides of the basketball, it's going to be a beautiful thing to watch. Great. Thank you very much, Coach. Next, we're going to go to Dan. Dan, go ahead and ask your question. Thanks. Thanks for the time, Coach. You're welcome. Uh, I wanted to ask you, I uh, just spoke with Bella about pregame routines, and I wanted to ask you, as a coach uh, who's also a performer in your own right, if you have any pregame routines that you use to get your uh, mindset ready for a game, if you can describe those for us. I do. I, uh, we go to shoot around and, and come back and I take a little nap um, and I get up and, and watch film uh, of their of the opponent's last game or our game. Uh, I think of ways to, uh, to attack their defense what we can do. Um, I kind of play the game in my head like a player, in a sense. Uh, and then I listen to my motivation uh, talk. Uh, I put on a YouTube video uh, and listen to that. And I listen to Pastor T.D. Jakes as well. Uh, and once I get into the gym, uh, two and a half hours before the game, uh, I turn off all phones focus on uh, what I have to do, how I have to encourage. Uh, it's crazy because when the game is over, I'm fatigued as well, like I played a full game. You know, I think um, the thing about me is that I want to leave everything on the court as well. As a coach, I want to give them everything that I could possibly give them offensively and defensively, motivate them uh, and, and encourage them because they, they are learning how to uh, compete at a high level for a long period of time, uh, which takes a lot of energy, a lot of effort, a lot of trust. Uh, and so that's what I try to do. And then afterwards, I, I try to, after the game, I, I go in and think about what I need to say. Uh, I try to correct 
one or two negative things and then uh, pick out the positive things. Uh, and then I go home and, and, and sleep and wake up at four o'clock in the morning and watch that film and, and get ready for practice, you know, and take notes and stuff like that. Uh, and then just come in and it's, it's weird because I was, I was telling my coaching staff, um, every game I feel good. I feel good. You know, I'm not, I don't, I feel like we're going to win every game. And uh, fortunately we don't win, but uh, we don't win because we beat ourselves. It's, it's, I, I don't, I haven't, we haven't played a game that a team actually beat us. You know, we made mistakes, turnovers, um, miss assignments, uh, those things that we can correct. Uh, no one just out uh, hustle us or out talent us. It's just the mistakes that we made that we have to correct and uh, we will correct it and and we will be better. I know that was a long answer. So no, that's sorry. great. <laughs> Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you, coach. Um, we have Charlie Collier up next and uh, we're running on a bit of a deadline here, so we got to keep it brief. But uh, Ron, do you have a quick question for coach? Just a, just a, just a quickie. How's KT? She's, she's doing better. She's day uh, today. Uh, hopefully uh, we'll see her today. We haven't had practice, so uh, we'll see her in film. I'll talk to her and see how she feels in practice. And um, hopefully she can go uh, tomorrow, but it's a, a game time decision. Uh, it's, it's more about uh, how she feel uh, mentally. Uh, we don't want to put anybody in risk. Uh, if you're not mentally ready to to compete, then there's no reason to be out there because that's how injuries happens. Happen. So um, we just want to make sure she's mentally ready. And if she's capable, she says she can go and she feel like she can go at 100%, 110%, then uh, she will go tomorrow. But we don't know because I haven't seen her today. Great. Thank you very much for joining us today, Coach. Give us one second, guys, and we'll be back with Charlie Collier. <laughs> Hey, Charlie. Good. 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 I guess it's good morning out there, Charlie. Good morning. <laughs> good morning. Uh, I just asked Vicki about, and, and Ray and I were talking about that on the game the other night, that we're seeing these incremental improvements and your confidence seems to be building, uh, especially on the defensive end. Talk about what you have seen in yourself and what you've really focused on as far as improvement. I've definitely seen a huge improvement in my in my defense. Like you said, uh, I feel like I'm just being more confident out there, being more comfortable with my team. Uh, we got everybody back. And so we're bonding a little bit better. The chemistry is there. I just feel like um, I'm doing a great job of just being, um, you know, fulfilling my role on this team and uh, getting better each day. That's the, that's the improvement that I need to do each and every day is just improve 1% each and every day. And if I do that, I'll be a great basketball player. So I just want to improve in all areas. One quick thing. Um, do you still drink beet juice? <laughs> I do. I thought about, I was at Central Market, I saw beet juice and I thought, Charlie. <laughs> okay, yeah. just check. Okay. Yes, sir, I do. Thank you very much, Ron. Next, we're going to go to Adrian Rodriguez. Adrian, go ahead and ask your question. Hi, Charlie. Hope you're doing well. Uh, Hello, how are you? Good. Thank you for asking. Uh, so, after asking Coach Johnson, you know, about how the rookies have been doing, how the second year players have been doing. She praised you for your toughness. Um, you know, how's the transition been from college to professional and how do you feel like your first season's going so far, seven games in, you've been able to hang in with the, the bigger, tougher teams? Yeah, definitely a huge transition, but I feel like, um, like I said, I'm fulfilling it really well. I just want to improve each and every day and not be content with where I'm at. I always want to get better in all areas of my game. Uh, definitely um, it's different, you know, in the post as far as a rookie coming in. So I'm just, learning how to become a tougher basketball player, how to, you know, get rebounds on the move, how to make which move on which player and things like that, how to defend down low in the post. And so 
I'm just learning from my coaches. They're giving me a lot of pointers from the, you know, second year or third years on the team. They're just giving me good advice. And so I'm just learning as I go. And um, I want to get better each and every game that I that I play in. And so seven games in and we got a long season to go. So I want to improve each and every game and every practice. And how excited are you about the future? Super excited, super excited. I feel like the ceiling is very high, especially for me and my fellow rookies on the team. Uh, we're just getting started and, and, you know, we keep working hard and keep doing what coach asks us to do. We're going to have a great season. And so I'm just looking forward to, you know, what's, what's next, you know, not looking too far ahead in the road, but just day by day, taking each day at a time and improving 1% each every day. Thanks, Charlie. Thank you. Great. I think we have one more question uh, we have time for. So we're going to go to Dorothy Gentry. Dorothy, go ahead and ask your question. Good afternoon, Charlie. How are you today? Hey, Dorothy. I'm good. How are you? Doing pretty good. Thank you. I, I know it's been a short season so far. I'm sorry. Can you hear me? Okay. I know it's been a, a short season uh, so far, but I wanted to ask you, what moment this season have you been most proud of yourself in like the, the what, the six, six or seven games you all have played? What moment were you most proud of yourself? Uh, you know, I would just say so far, each and every game, I just felt like I've, I've held my own. You know, I've, I've grown in each and every game, but I would say just the first game of the season when we played L.A., that just proved to myself how how successful I can be, you know, coming off that, that great game. Just got to improve each and every game. Um, there's different sparks that I have in the game that make me realize that I can I can do something in this league and um, just got to be consistent with that each and every game. Uh, even in Phoenix, I had some key plays. Just, you know, here and there, I can just improve and do that, then I'll be good in this league. But just got to, you know, when it's my time, got to do what I have to do with my minutes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all for joining us today. Thank you for joining us, Charlie. We got to go uh, get ready for film and practice, y'all. So thanks again, and uh, we'll see you tomorrow for pregame media availability at 16 minutes prior to tip. That'll be 3 p.m. Central Time. Thanks, y'all. Bye. <laughs>